had a lot of fun in the 1990s, the early 90s, uh, 30 years ago, mixing with puzzlists who pointed out that old 17th century bar trick where you get a nail, typically that sort of size nail, and you hammer it into the bar of the pub and you challenge people to put a dozen nails on top of it, just resting so they're staying there. How can you do it? Huh, extraordinary. So I came across the solution, which is this one here. There's 10 of them at least, all suspended in that two horizontal bars and all the others rest either side. So the rule of this is, well, the human rules are no glue, no um, magnets, no string, invisible string. It's got to be done just, just as you see it. And the rules of the physics demand that you have to suspend that point there exactly where the center of mass is, or the axle, axle there would be the center of mass. And the center of mass with the pieces hanging down actually lies just beneath that point, so that it's stable. If it was above, it would tip over. So there's, those are the conditions. And when you flop it down, bump down it goes. However, what they showed at this um, puzzle party where I got it into was this little thing here. They hadn't got those holes there. They got just that hole there. And you don't do that. You do that. Okay, there's a little recess for it, like that. And now you're in trouble because you've now got to rest it. Well, I'll see when we're in the studio, perhaps later in the summer, how to actually do it like that. It's very tricky to do, but it is possible. However, in 1990, I was quite active with ideas. And the first thing I did said, well, can we do away with this thing here? Just throw it away and try this. Try resting on a, uh, a freestanding nail. Eventually, with my fingers down there and, a down, uh, and many, many hours later, you need lots of PNP &P with this, persistence and patience. I did manage to do it. I was very pleased. So that's one direction I took it to. I took it to, they had already pointed out you could put it on the point, not the head of the nail, and now I found a freestanding nail. The second thing I did was, what about different sizes of nails? It works out that if you go down to the next size down, which is, um, there's a one inch, uh, what's it down here? That's the, that's a three inch nail. And then you have a two inch nail, and then you have a one inch nail. I managed to get them on the nail head with those small ones, but they're so light, I could not get them on the points, even with the, with, with the assistance of one of these, no good. You can go up to the next stage up, which is a four inch nail, which is much easier to cope with actually, because there's the more pressure you've got, the more, the more, um, the more friction it produces and helps to stabilize it. Just for fun, I thought I'd go to the top and go to a, a large hardware store and get one of these nails, which is a 10 inch one nail. And do notice you can also fix them in a vice, not necessarily this bit of wood. It's a bit fussy to make that bit of wood. Why not just put them into something like what I call this um, little clamp thing or the bow, and then, uh, then hold it nice and firm and favorite. So that's another way of doing it. Now there's one other way which you can go, which Angus Lavery pointed out to me. So to do that, I'll just set it up again for you. So we're going to do it the normal way, which is in the, oh no, that's a bigger nail. That's what it's going to rest on. I'm not going to try and put it on the points. And the main, way of doing it is to put the horizontal nail there, put one here, put one here. Oops, Daisy. Put one more here and one more here. That's one side. If you can leave a little gap there, it helps because you can see what you're doing. But you don't need that actually with this. It's more critical with the points of putting on an air point. Then the same thing this side. So either side of that center of gravity point, the center of mass, it's got an equal number of nails. Four there and four there, that's eight. And the last one, this is the clever bit, you put that on top of that like that. And when you lift this thing up with a bit of squeezing of the fingers, it should just about hold. That's it. Oh, should easy. Oh, there we are. And we bring it into view and we balance it. And it's very easy to do. Well, for me, I found very easy to do on a nail head because it's so broad. So there's one more development that Angus Lavery, a friend of mine who's highly meant is sort of when we when I showed this to him in 1990, he said, what about some, he did it in theory, enlarging it with many, many more nails, 20, 30, 50, 100 nails, spreading out this way. Again, no magnets, no, no glue, no string, and make sure that the center of mass is exactly in line with that axis where it's suspended, and that the central gravity of center mass is beneath the actual point of suspension, so it's stable. He reckoned in theory, he's worked out how to actually do it infinite number. Well, a ton of nails on that. Can you imagine that? I never got him to draw it out for me. I think I must do that because I'd love to demonstrate that and have a go at doing 20 or 30 nails at least. I feel more ambitious about this now that I've got it again. But what I'd love to do is show you the uh, the, the, the effect when you have it on the upright nail like that, because that really is stunning. When you blow it, it'll actually spin. I don't think this will spin. It'll just... 
<laughs> no. When it's on a point, it'll actually spin round and round, and that's going to be a lot of fun for me to do. I'm going to really nail this problem. Huh. <laughs>